Hi, I'm Randall. You might know me as... Randy. Randy, where are you? Randy. Randy. Yeah. Hang out with Captain Q long enough, and you'll end up buying a boat. And I'm no exception. So join me as I navigate the ups and downs of owning an old sailboat. I thought what might be interesting for those of you that have watched our episode 11 on the Shield 45 is a quick flash forward. Um, because what we don't get to do with Captain Q is after the boat is purchased, we don't get to go and scrutinize it in greater detail. And now because I own this boat, um, I'm happy to scrutinize it and tell you all the great things about it and all the other areas that could use a little bit of TLC. So, so this would be one of our first post sale walkthroughs, boat tours. You know, if the learning curve is like this, I am somewhere down here. So still a lot to learn. So thanks for coming along and thanks for, thanks for watching. I think I saw Shackleton going by over here. Yeah, yeah, it's a little with, cold for him. With, with two boats following him. So what do you got up here? So what we got up here is um, a couple of things. Um, one, the roller furler is amazing. This is probably the easiest, simplest roller furler action I've seen on any boat. So, really? Yeah, it's really great. So that's a win. Um, one thing I don't love is I don't love these chalk blocks here. Um, down here, I'd like a little... Uh, cutaway because you try to feed a big line through there and it gets kind of i don't know clogged up in there they get jammed up probably yeah, yeah, yeah i like yeah. them with a little separation so i can understand that's that. that's a little pet peeve of mine um the windlass here uh is missing a clutch plate so i'm not exactly sure how much torque i'm going to be able to get on that that's something i got to check check out later so one thing that we didn't quite notice i don't think when we first toured is we, i have a uh it's a cutter rig i've got a i've got a stay tack here oh yeah you are a cutter rig yeah yeah but down below where this would connect through the deck um, there's no fitting so when they replaced the decking uh, which was done about five years ago they didn't actually put a, uh, a mechanical pass-through because there is a cable down in the anchor lock yeah that, that that hooks up that to would something. hook up to it but there's no hook on the on the over oh, on the underside yeah well that'll give you something to do right tomorrow so that's a, yeah that's a, that's one thing that's kind of like oh okay that'd be great to have It'll be have to have to be dealt with. This hatch yep. uh, leaks a little bit. I don't know where the leak comes from, but uh, it's got to be addressed at some point. You won't have to worry today. Nothing is leaking There's today. There's no leaking at all. No, no very um, solid. Okay. But I keep I put this cover on it, and that seems to uh, stop any of the leaks. I'm just sure it will. Keeps it yeah. just kind of mellow, so that's not a big deal. Um, <coughs> I am going to be revarnishing the whole toll rail this spring once it gets a little bit warmer than today. So that's fun to look forward to. I actually enjoy that process. Well, that's very that's very uh, satisfying. It's like shining your shoes. Yeah, exactly. Tell me about the deck now. The deck seems to have a little bit of a pitch to it. Well, it's uh, it's very crowned. Um, so you can see it, especially down beneath in the V-berth. It's crowned to give you good headroom. Could be a plus or a minus. I'm not quite sure if I'm. If the jury's out on that, I think when we were underway, when we went for that sale, I didn't mind it so much. Oh, we never noticed it, frankly. Yeah. No. Yeah, it was pretty. All the way down from uh, Manchester. Yeah, a couple hundred to miles. A couple hundred miles down to yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, so, well, it looks pretty good then. The bowsprit's a little stubby and a little short for me. Um, I know. Somebody mentioned that they didn't see a bowsprit on here, but there is a sprit, albeit uh, not the biggest one right. yet. And actually one of our viewers pointed out, or several of our viewers pointed out that some of the scratches on the hull were because um, there were rubs from the anchor because the anchor was not far off enough out um, when it anchored. So if you had a bow sprit with your anchor a little bit kicked out further, you wouldn't run into that chain scratch. I'm sure you'll get a bow sprit by this time next year. Uh, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see, but that's on the wish list. Okay, good. I think that's about it for here. In the main cockpit, uh, we saw this in the show. Love the mahogany uh, sole. I'm going to refinish that over the winter, next few months. Um, here's one thing that's really annoying. This is probably the best seat in the house. You know, it's the most sheltered. It's the most center line. Yes. And we got this big thing protruding right in the in your back. So yep, yep. it's kind of ruined that seat. And you know, we've got seating for a few people, but if there's, you know, if it's if it's getting wet in here. 
that really bothers me. Um, well, that's easily correctable. Screwdriver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and undo it. And you can relocate those items, sure. I think we really enjoyed the center cockpit. I think it's a good vantage point for a bigger boat. The seating here is great. There's a lot of snoozing that happened along this cockpit seat. Yeah. Yep. The combing is plenty good. It's a little high when you go to jump out and it's a drop down on the other side. Well, so isn't there a step out there for you? There's one little step here. Yeah. Right. It's about a size seven foot. So you, you might be able to fill around with that a little bit. Yeah. Make that a little more convenient. We've got the uh, electric driven winches, which I didn't think I would like, but they're pretty handy. So the helmsman's position is pretty great. Good visibility. Uh, we put the Dodger down and that was pretty great as well. Oh yeah, we had wonderful visibility everywhere. If you, if you want to look over the Dodger, there's a little step here that's kind of nice. I didn't find myself using that too much because it puts my head right in the in the way of... Well, you're a very boom. tall person. Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> um, there's, what's nice is sitting here and then you can put someone else here. I had someone who had a little mal de mer that uh, I decided to sit him back here and get them a little more comfortable before. Yep, so. yep. Um, it's very, very commodious, and, and uh, the nice thing too is that you can probably get, I don't know, six, eight people in here having uh, hors d'oeuvres and cocktails. I noticed you got a, looks like you got a table down here yeah, too. Yeah, the table is, is a little Lilliputian. It needs to be, uh, you know, it's about enough for four cocktails. I would really want a cocktail table that spans and gives everyone a little bit of a... Well, you can build that next week. Yeah. So uh, that's on the list. That's on the wish list. There's no bridge deck here, is there? There isn't. Yeah. Well, we're not really worried on this boat about being pooped completely, but if you take out some of the boards now, as you've just done, look at that. Now you've got the equivalent of a bridge deck right there, you see? Yep, I left them in. Oh, and uh, soggy. All right. Glad you made it back here. We are in the aft cockpit, which is one of the most unique features that we've seen on any boat that we've toured. Um, wow. I have to say, this is one of my favorite spots because as you can see right now, we've got a pretty steady wind and we're in the sea with this little cabin top. And so you can imagine we get the cushions out here. You're sitting here in the lee and it's very, very comfortable. It's, um, I won't be sitting on it now because it's ice, but. You it's actually just, can sit on it. I it, just sat on it over here. It's pretty great. I mean, ah. you can have people up in the cockpit socializing. You can have a little quiet time back here. You can read, uh, have a little dark and stormy. So pretty great. Um, and it looks like you've got some, uh, what are these tubes going out here on tubes. the back of the boat? Yeah, yeah. So these are my davits. Uh, we use this to haul up the dinghy and bring it with us. I've got the, the dire dow and... Uh, it's not my it's not my best rigging job, but I'm going to work on that over the the spring to have a better mounting. Okay. Uh, one big thing that's back here that needs a lot of work is uh, under this uh, starboard side locker is my gas cans. Okay. Uh, and they're loose and for, there's a for there's, propane gas. Yep, you mean? Yep. There's two tanks. Two. Uh, I think they're 11 pound tanks, and they're not well situated. And there's a solenoid that's loose and gets wet and it's a wet locker so it's really not a good place for any of that stuff so okay. that, that's a big big to do can i hold on to that wire we call that a shroud where i'm from it looks like a pretty swell neat little cockpit back yeah, here yeah yeah it's, it's, and you can get away from the matting crowd that's way forward that's right up in that uh, midship cockpit which is huge yeah. so uh, interesting sheen on the canvas back here <laughs> <laughs> that's your 24 degree yeah 30 knot winds, 24 degrees. Yep. Shackleton would love it. All right, we're inside the main saloon. You're in the galley. Uh, we heard from uh, a viewer that um, Henry Shield designed the aft <laughs> cockpit. What? Go ahead. I want to hear. You're a problem. I want to... <laughs> Henry Shield designed um, the aft cockpit as a, a place for him to smoke a pipe so that he wouldn't interfere with his guests who would be in the main cockpit. So that was kind of a fun thing. Well, he put the, uh, a tub in as a bit of a joke, but it turned out that uh, in 1973, the wives of the potential owners really liked the tub. And then he quickly had orders for six boats. So wow. it became an actual, actually a popular feature. So uh, why don't we go up to the V-Birth? I can show you some of the highlights. And lowlights. All right, I'll follow you up there. A little messy right now because I have my cockpit cushions. I have uh, my boom and my rigging for my dyer dow up here. I have a sunshade. I have some spare trim wood, some mahogany that I picked up. 
um, and there's some more cockpit cushions. Um, so yeah, it's a little messy, but really the key thing, there are a couple of key things up in the V-berth that I discovered. We're missing the, the latch down that would connect to the tack for the staysail. We just got to drill. Yeah, we can just we drill, drill a hole. Yeah. We'll be through there. The most curious thing that I spent the most time on is we've got, this, we've got two batteries up here, up in the V-berth, and there's this really complicated electrical arrangement that I don't quite understand, and I don't quite see the logic. But anyway, it's really meant to drive two things. One is the windlass and one is the bow thruster. Okay. Um, what I've also discovered is it drives my main bilge pump in the main saloon. These batteries? These two batteries. Drive your main bilge pump? Yep. Wow, okay, that's interesting. Isn't so, that just a backup for it? No, it's the main source okay. for the bilge. Um, What's curious is the way that these batteries get charged, I don't know if you can see, under my feet, is by a trickle charger that is plugged into the AC outlet. Oh yeah. So it's not exactly the most fail-proof system. Uh, while we're here for a yeah. second, can you explain to me what this is? Yeah, so this is a switch panel and there's really only one live switch on it, which is for the windlass. So in order to run the windlass, I discovered you have to flip this switch on. You have to switch on the main battery switch, which is under here. And because we're going to keep it interesting, we have a bonus battery switch there. So there's a little guy there, and then there's a big, big one up here. Now, why do you need two battery switches? I don't really know. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> she was the first of her kind, right? Yeah. So I'm going to imagine there's a lot of things that went on here that they sort of experimented with and said, Let's, what do you think about putting this in or putting that in or doing this? Yeah. And then when the boat was built, they added things on afterwards. So um, you're just comfortable to learn what they are and yeah. then uh, hopefully get them working or I'll strip it out and, and start uh, with a, a clean sheet of paper. Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest discovery of the entire year so far has been that the electrical system is really convoluted and been patched together over the last, I don't know, uh, 50 years, oh, 40, 48 years. Take a look at the crown up there on your deck. Just yep. We were talking about that earlier. Yep. You can see the curvature here. Behind also notice the head. headroom here. I mean, oh, I'm 6'1". Yeah. Six, six and behind you, we can six, really six. see the, the uh, curvature and some of those battens yep. going across the uh, headliner. Yep. Wow. One Very of, nice. One of which needs to be uh, repaired a little bit. But So okay. here's a few things. Next up is um, the forward head, which I have uh, in winter winterizing condition here. Um, there's a couple of curious things that I've discovered and learned the hard way. One is it's got two valves, a valve here and then a valve in this cabinet. Um, and those are basically directing whether it's going to go to the holding tank or if it's going to go straight overboard or be pumped out. Um, that's something I've had to learn a little bit about. Now, is this electric or is this uh... no, it's a hand pump, hand pump, uh, but we have a macerator switch over here. Okay. Uh, you can see there. Um, and, and that's electric. Looks like you've got a shower in here too. I've got a shower and a shower grate, which uh, this was a curious thing that I learned the hard way. So I took a really nice hot shower one day. Yep. I had been on the boat for a couple of days, took a shower, got the hot water going. And then I heard trickle, 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 trickle. Oh. And guess what? Trickle sound. Uh, the sump pump uh, for this shower was not connected. Oh, uh, so what was trickling? It was overflowing right into the bilge. There was a oh. there was a tank. The pump had no electricity and had no uh, outlet connected to it. That's so, the worst thing you want on a boat, isn't it? Just about to have uh, uh, shower uh, uh, left over in yeah, the bilge. Yeah. Because I mean, you, thankfully it wasn't you know hair or anything like that because it was trapped into the the pump oh, re reservoir. Awful. But then it was like, oh man, that's an you know. And then I read the owner's notes, which were pretty sparse and it just said we prefer to use the aft head shower well the reason being if you read between the lines it's because the forward head shower sump wasn't connected that's why they prefer it so and something else tell tell uh, your fans here that uh, uh one thing about having shower gunk in the in the bilge is that eventually it will start to stink oh yeah and and it's really a terrible and, and you won't know where it's coming from until suddenly you open up the bilge and look around and See scum and two stuff. things I like to have in a in a boat. One is quiet. Yeah. No slapping lines. No, you right. know, quiet as possible. And then tie off your halyards all the time. Sweet do you? smelling as possible. You always tie off your halyards, don't oh, yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. On a bale or something yeah. to keep it keep and it and keep quiet. it smell free. Sweet smelling as possible. Um, so that means no diesel and no uh, grungy bilge. Oh, are you gonna take the diesel out? No, no, no. Just 
I'll have less than the PB. Right, right, right. <laughs> Which is the PB was at the bar was, is pretty low. That was like an high. oil freighter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, All right, so so now we're in the main saloon. Uh, what's interesting here is that I don't have a settee here, uh, but I could kind of use it, and I don't really have a dining table. I have three dining tables. So this one is actually broken, needs to be repaired. But when it flips up and then flips over, it becomes this massive piece of mahogany. And it, there's not really great seating for it. So I have this table here, which is a great little cocktail table. Um, and I have it almost replicated, almost the same thing right here. So okay. this flips up and open here, which is a great little workstation. Um, but as far as, you know, if you were hosting, let's say five or six people here, there's not really one place where you can sit around and have a meal. Um, and you might do that if it was inclement weather. I think you'll be eventually able to, to devise something around the mast. Looking at this, uh, we have seen a lot of boats in the winter. And we're here in the dead of winter, the real dead of winter. And it's bright as can be in here, isn't it? Yeah. You've got this big, tall cabin top, which, you know, is got to be pretty close to six, eight, six, nine, almost seven, oh, seven feet I, and stuff. I think so. Yeah. You know, what's so. that about? I almost Ten another inches. foot. Almost another yeah. foot. Ten inches. So anyway. it's incredible amount of headroom, which is great. It makes it feel a lot bigger space than it is. Um, my my long term desire is to do some type of settee, maybe wrap around here that would work with a table, so that you could have maximum reclining seating. I also have this beautiful um, wood stove. This was a gift from. That's a gorgeous piece of equipment. <laughs> oh my God! This is a Where beautiful did you get Christmas that? gift from Captain Ten Q. Oh. <laughs> What? And now I've got to I've got to figure out where to mount it. What and, a guy, uh, the captain! And so the boat's really bright. And what do you have forward here? Do you have more up here at the? Yeah, you do, don't yeah. you? These are non-opening. They they used to be functional, but you can see by based on the angle of this uh, port light that it will trap water in this little trough. Because, okay. And so the owner sealed over with a piece of plexiglass off of the top. So I've seen um, subsequent pictures of that causing problems. So okay. that seems to be a pretty good play, way to mitigate it. Well, Although, it might be something to investigate. Maybe you can yeah. waterproof it some way so you could use it on breezy it hot days. It would be days. nice, yeah. I, I think it can be done. I stayed on here on the boat when it was pretty hot this summer, and it, it, I didn't really run into too many problems as far as... Oh, this boat's going to be very comfortable. I think she's well insulated, yeah. I think. So Galley, um, one of the big um, discoveries was that one of the through holes... Uh, underneath here uh, is really impossible to get to. So you'll learn about that uh, in an upcoming episode. Um, it's something that has to be dealt with because in an emergency, it's a pretty big one. Uh, and if that were to pop, it, it is nearly impossible to get to. So, and I presume you'd be popping that through hull when you're not in a calm seaway. Why do you like this, uh, this galley? The galley is great because you've got a nice kind of distance to, to be, um, stable in a seaway. One of my favorite things is the front access fridge with mm. the top access as well. We've got the ice box over here. You even have an ice maker. You do a little demo there. Wow, look at the... Uh... So it's a little little grungy right now. One of the things I've discovered here is um, one of the foot pumps is broken, so I've got to replace that pump. Um, one other thing is the pressure water system is uh, has a small leak into the bilge so i've got to trace that and it's it's really hard to get to because there's a couple of big water tanks in the way okay so that's something that has to be dealt with it's not a big leak but it's it does put water right into the bilge whenever i'm under pressure so wow it looks why, pretty nice why, in there why are you shooting my crotch and you, you could probably put a uh, galley strap in there too somewhere yeah to keep you from yep. you could even put a flip up table here if you wanted to really lock yourself in i thought yep. about that too yeah um this countertop is a little beat up and so i want to do something with this this faucet is kind of grungy and i'd like to replace all of this at some point um so well it's really nice and you've got storage behind there pretty well lots too. lots of storage you? yep it, these are okay i don't i don't love them but um it's decent yeah you know it's funny though i i don't see something Oh, yeah. No. It's back what, here. What's the... Oh, thank goodness. Good. Who? Close call. Okay. So I'm at the nav station here. Um, it's pretty tidy. At first, uh, the radios didn't really work. I couldn't quite figure out how to get them fired up and actually just... Uh, you know, calling on VHF, uh, something was disconnected, so I had to troubleshoot that, get the antennas going. Uh, I have a single sideband radio, which doesn't actually work. It, it turns on and everything, but the antenna uh, is down in the bilge, so 
it's really not serving much purpose at this moment. Okay. Um, but it's pretty wide. Now, on subsequent um, models, what they did with this nav station is they turned it sideways here and angled it this way. Uh-huh. And they bought themselves a little more room here um, and made this workbench longer. So why don't you come back with me? And so we've got a workbench kind of set up here. Um, I've seen people take this on, on Morgan 461s and 462s and make this into a bar. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't quite get that. I could see making this into a little uh, berth if you had a little bit more length, if you were to extend it, but... Um, it, it would make a nice, uh, it's a, it'd be a really nice sea berth here. And we've yeah. seen that on other boats. You'd probably have to strip out most of the furniture, I would think, right. and kind of start from scratch. So yeah. sometimes with a lot of these boats, it's a good idea to leave things as they are until you've used them yep. and then decide if you need another berth there or not. Yep. But but that would be a great place. Good idea. So this is uh, this is my where my batteries live. Um, this is kind of a hodgepodge battery charger that works off of outlets. It's pretty loud, and it's not something I want to keep long-term, but it's there. Um, it works. Why don't you... Uh, now, we got a lot of doors here uh, yeah. on your left hand, your right-hand side here. Wow, Randa, this is quite an engine room. We see a lot of engine rooms, don't we? Yeah. Are you actually getting into this engine I'm room? I'm going to get into it. Wow. Uh, we call this <laughs> the guest room maybe sometimes. Yeah, what? so if you want to know where I spent majority of my time on this boat, it is right here. Right there. What um, were you doing? So I oh. wanted to study everything that I could. I wanted to learn about the engine. I wanted to learn about the generator. Um, I wanted to learn all the things that I don't really know about diesel, diesel engines, uh, marine engines, how they work, how they cool, uh, what the exhaust looks like. It's... It's a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of stuff here that's patchworked. I'll give you an example here, right? This is my oil filter for oh. my engine. My engine's way over here. My oil filter is sitting in the bilge like that. Oh, that's an interesting arrangement. <laughs> I mean, just to study that and try to figure out wait, wait, where is my oil filter. It's not where the diagram says. It's certainly accessible, though, I will say sure that. Sure is. Yeah, yeah. So... I spent a lot of, so I changed the oil, changed the filters, uh, changed the impeller, um, unclogged my through hole for this raw water intake. I also uh, replaced a few gaskets. Um, I cleaned up as much as I could, but this is the area. I, I also changed the Raycor fuel filter, which you can see is pretty, uh, needs another change right about now. Wow, already, yeah. So, a lot of time back here, probably. 10 days of just sitting here staring you just gonna sit there staring at the back of the seat <laughs> just trying to figure out what you know why does that fuel line set up like that yeah that's certainly an interesting manifold system yeah um i only have one fuel tank <laughs> so well um but things ran smoothly so one thing that's interesting is that this engine has about 9700 hours on it uh -huh. it leaks uh antifreeze it leaks antifreeze. Yep. And I... Oh, so the greenness down there is our antifreeze backup supply, right? <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, yeah, you certainly want to find out what that's all about. Yeah, so that's a big concern. So that's really my, my primary concern for the upcoming season is going to be uh, this whole engine room systems, learning it, understanding it, making it as good as possible. You know, this this type of stuff doesn't really cut it with me. This insulation is 50 years old what's this stuff right over your head here these wires and these wheels yeah this is my steering cable system yeah. oh, okay yep so i've got heat exchangers i've got and you've got all a kinds looks of stuff. like a bilge pump in here too is that yep do you operate that from up on deck or yep, yep. down this here is the the gusher um it's connected to the scuppers as well so okay um and what's the big silver container over in the corner yeah, we've got your hot water heater there that looks like a nice one yep and there's a water pump there, old school water pump. There's my refrigeration compression, uh, compressor over here, my refrigeration compression here. Got my muffler here, big through hole here, down here for raw water intake. And there's a big through hole over by you. Um, there are two through holes that are plugged up here as well. So I've got a couple of through holes that are just capped off. Well, you got your work cut out, but you've already done a whole lot to get it cleaned up and tidied up to this point. So a that's a little bit, yeah. You it, get you get points for that. At least I got the engine oils and fuel filters changed so that they're they're pretty happy so far. And you know where everything is pretty much right now. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, you might recognize this from um, our bilge cleaner. I don't know if you can see down there. See how clean my bilge is now? Holy smokes. Pretty, pretty shiny compared to what it was before. That's practically surgical. Look at that. Wow, that's really nice. All right, Very so nice. this this is probably the biggest um, single issue. The electrical system here. It's a lot older and um, more patched work than I thought or even knew. So um, just even operating all these things is confusing to me. Um, a couple of things. One, my tank tender. I only have one, one tank that works. I can show you that demo. That's my water tank right now. I only have a couple of gallons in it, so I, I drained it for the winter, but that's the only tank that works. Um, this is my shore power selector, which I've learned. It's my generator start uh, and stop. My AC load um, panel. So right now I've got some outlets on and uh, but this is all this is all taking me hours and hours to try to figure out a lot of experimentation um my batteries which are pretty drained right now so i can turn some lights off um so if you want to see the the disaster part here yeah let's see how's this stuff all glued together oh not well uh, yeah uh, that's just Whoa! So if you want to talk about a snake oh. pit. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Yep. There is a lot to be dealt with here. And it goes down and down and down too, doesn't it? <gasps> wow. Well, I got one idea to fix it right now. Um, close the door. Yep. Oh, look, it looks a lot better. <laughs> We're just going to pretend we didn't see that. Yep, yep, looks a lot better right now. Yeah. I'll even show you, uh, this is the back side of my uh, engine control panel up in the cockpit. Oh, and that's neatly done, too. Uh, and by neatly, yeah. you mean chaotically. Exactly. Yep. Wow. So, yeah, there's a lot here. This is my um, old school um, unit for the autopilot. Yes, I remember that. So That'll make a nice desk ornament. Yeah, so that's going to come out. It's just a lot of wiring here. A lot of stuff is dead end and doesn't go anywhere. I mean, you see these wires that, you know, have no labels and... And where do all these wires go? That's just an enormous amount of wires that click their yeah. heading aft. Yeah. I can't imagine where those all go. Uh, What's that little no thing right there? Oh, uh, that's part of the GPS um, B and G system. Okay. So yeah, this is a lot, lot to learn. It's uh, it's a little overwhelming when you look at the snake pit. I'm not an electrician. I don't have a background in electrical engineering or, or electrical work. So uh, the learning curve is gonna be pretty steep. The temptation is to like rip it all out and start fresh, uh, which I'd love to do, but that might be for year number two because you know most of the stuff works, so. Uh, a couple of months from now, don't do it right away. Yeah, <laughs> if it ain't broke, just uh, yeah, pretend you didn't see it. Well, it's a great. It's nice to have this this room, though. At the very least, having a whole room for your electrical panel. Well, how, here's one thing that I thought cool about: is that? If, if you had a modern electrical panel that was very simple and streamlined, right. you could actually buy back a uh, more shower room here. There's about oh. there's about a foot behind here. Um, yep. And yep. If you look at it, if I peel this back, you can see. Oh, sure. There's. I the could market. reclaim yep. a big part of this, either as a hanging locker or as as part of the tub yeah let's say i wanted to maybe put a sauna or something in that tub i could have a little sitting area that you, could bump out this way you could do a sauna so yeah you could get creative which saunas would come in handy at it if you're on yep. cold offshore and you want to dry things out and i think uh, it was uh well, not huey long but uh the guy that had the original on deans had saunas on his boats yeah the racing that's classy it is I feel like that's the right way to go we sort of had one on the pv but not really that's another story it the, anyway it was the engine room <laughs> right all right, come on back. Here's the aft stateroom. Is this where the king lives? This is where the king lives. Wow. Um, so what's interesting about this is we have a split bunks, which is a little bit unusual. On some of the, the future Morgan versions of it, they combine this. They they don't have this walkout companion way. They just have that sealed off about here, and they put the bunk underneath it. So they got one big giant bunk. Um, it's a little bit different, and it gets a little takes a little getting used to with um, this height here. If you uh, turn over in your sleep, you're you might whack your knees pretty hard. Um, then we've got the master head here. What we learned about this is that um, this is a direct discharge 
uh, head. So we only use that if we're three miles offshore or greater. Okay. That's the rules. Um, really should have a holding tank. There's a foot pump, uh, a freshwater foot pump Can that, I, that's broken. Can I look at that? Yes. So this is, this is broken and needs to be repaired. Um, this sink flow doesn't work very well and the drain uh, doesn't work all that well either. So there's a bunch of plumbing issues that need to be ironed out uh, in addition to the head. So, um, and then we've got, of course. Oh, cool. Look at that. The tub. A bathtub. Now, you know, you like me to test things sometimes on some of these boats we look at. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see you test this tub. All right. Look at me. He's going down there. This is six foot one, massive male. <gasps> he actually fits in this. Thank God we've got yeah, a yeah. wide angle lens here. Look at there this. Go. He's comfy. Pretty He's comfy. very comfy. Yeah. And what's behind the green door here? Uh, so say. this is the access to the engine room right here. So. Oh my gosh. So it's pretty great. One thing I would, I'm thinking about redoing is some of the lighting and some of the, the wall treatments here. I think it, it might be nice if we uh, if I got a little creative with it. So, so that's that's pretty much the the flash forward. That's the synopsis of some of the good things, some of the things that need some work. Um, so now the next things I'm going to show you are the step by step of me either sitting catatonic and staring at the engine room or making my way through my little checklist of things that need to be addressed. I want to say thanks to my cameraman. Oh well, shucks, it was nothing. <laughs>